Hello everyone and welcome to another War Theater PvMP video. In addition, welcome to the new expansion of Lord of the Rings Online, Riders of Rohan. Everything is now at level 85, and so along with some 1 vs 1s that I finally managed to get for this whole thing, I'm also going to be talking a bit about uh, the expansion itself, and mostly focusing on War Leaders, because that is what this YouTube channel, well this playlist, not the channel, the playlist is for. The playlist is about the War Leader. My Reaver sneaks in occasionally, but he's just kind of a side attraction. I'm going to be talking about that and a bit about the expansion itself, some of the major changes of the Etmores. Uh, a lot of the stuff does directly affect the fights as they happen. And uh, we'll just go ahead and just kind of do things as they go. Uh, the other big thing is that I did hit rank 10 just prior to the expansion, and after the expansion went up, I finally bought all of my extra stuff, unlike in the last video where I was rank 10 and had basically no changes whatsoever. Um, now... I've got all that extra stuff, so here are all of my trait changes. I th the only thing that really changed was I think I took out one racial trait. I took out uh, Leader of the Orcs and put in Brutal Persuasion, which gives me extra critical rating. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. No class trait changes or anything like that. Oh, and uh, Audacity got uh, changed up as well. And so for these fights, I go the entire time at 8 Audacity. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, anyway, I, th I think that's <laughs> enough time to see all the, the trait changes and everything. Let's go ahead and just get started. Ooh, all right, yeah. now first off is now Grimmir, <laughs> who I'm chasing down. He has the population yeah, buff. Anyway. He's fine. Now, He's fine you can hear He's people talking in the background. This is something uh, that I'm usually very good about uh, avoiding, but I'm actually listening yeah. to a podcast yeah. when I'm running fraps. And ordinarily, I keep myself from doing this because I know it'll come through on the video itself and be really distracting. This is basically the one time you're probably going to hear me break that rule and have it recorded anyway, and that was so because i wasn't planning to get into 1v1s i was running fraps anyway but then it happens and i didn't have time to alt tab turn it off and do any of that stuff uh, fortunately i'm at the end of the episode already so that up. is going to be taken care of uh, the it'll continue for a couple minutes and then the whole thing finishes off now starting off I, I really don't know where my power level stands compared to this guy i've heard that war leaders are really strong from some of the other guys that i that i know who play war leaders who are very good at it uh, so I held off on yeah, healing at first better. just to see how well so, I was yeah, going to do, I'm, I'm but uh, right now, but as you can see, it didn't work out so well, and uh, totally. I'm okay, using guys? the shield bash okay. quite a bit. Uh, it's doing some great time, damage. It's also doing the, the stuns, which is fantastic, but uh, I, I let myself lose a lot of morale there without healing, which uh, was a, a bit of a mistake, but I am going to be able to recover from that, and a, a big part of that is being able to use those stuns, put them down. Uh, the power of fear is still really, really handy. I've still got my big cooldowns. I haven't hit any of my potions. Uh, as you can see, I stocked up quite well before Rohan hit, so I mean, I've got loads of uh, super buff potions, uh, even stacks of extra good health and the morale well, morale and power potions, rather. And so uh, things are, are going pretty well. Uh, the other thing I did at the beginning, you notice I dropped both the Banner of Horror and the Banner of Terror. You can do that, you can drop them both in tandem. Uh, their cooldowns were cut in half, so I get a two and a half minute cooldown because of the lead to charge trait. And that increases the amount of damage that he takes, wipes out his power. Uh, it's a minus 10% outgoing damage for the, the free peoples that are affected by it. So it's even more effective for putting a cap on the amount of damage I put out, and as you can see, I uh, very easily managed to clean that up, even despite allowing him to get quite a way into my morale bar. Alright, now the next fight, uh, this is Zimbros, and this is shortly after that last fight with Nalgrimir, and uh, what actually happens is I'm not even fully recharged or anything, but I was trying to farm the hobbits here in this section of the uh, Etmores, and he found me. Uh, Nalgrimir, I had run into him and found him, and unfortunately wasn't engaged with the hobbit. Uh, but with him, no, no such luck, so uh, I did go ahead and hit a power potion right off the bat because uh, I know that the power regeneration, I'm already starting off on the back foot there. But at the same time, he is in glory stance, so he's not going to be hitting as hard. He doesn't have the power regeneration of a fervor champ, so that's going to be a uh, point to my favor. I'm going to be able to wear him down as I've shown in uh, some other videos. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit different because he does have the population buff and you know, this is Rohan and all that stuff. So we'll see what exactly is happening. Uh, the thing he's doing that that's very good of him is he's trying to move away from my banners. He hasn't moved far enough. I I haven't let him get all the way out of range. Uh, he's managed to get out of the banner of terror, and uh, he's still in the range of horror because they're not positioned right on top of each other exactly, which is nice. But uh, I think it just despawned or he managed to just take his one step back. 
Uh, but anyway, he is out of range of those now, and that's not going to be affecting the fight until they come back off cooldown. Now, I do have the point defense available, but as I said, I'm running into some power stuff, so I will be using Command Post because I want that extra power regen, which the Command Post power regeneration did get a nice boost, uh, a buff, finally, when Rohan came out. It uh, has about double the regeneration it used to have, which uh, still is not super high, but it's better than nothing, and uh, honestly, it's not that bad to have. It's uh, something like... I want to say 180 regeneration. Don't quote me on that, I think I might be off by a bit. But uh, it's not not bad at all. Now I'm doing a much better job of managing to stay on top of his damage and keep my healing up. Uh, a big part of that is just that he's not in fervor stance. And that really does help out quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure why I deselected him there. I, I think I was doing something but I can't recall what exactly. Uh, oh, that, I remember I saw something down the hill, which I saw some names through the cliff just right there, but uh, I was trying to see if I could select it and didn't get anything. If I recall correctly, that's what that was. Now, he is starting to run out of power, and uh, that's what I said earlier about him not having the regeneration of the Fervor Champs. Where the Fervor Champion, the regeneration is ridiculously high. And on top of that, my cooldowns have finished, so I've redeployed Terror and I've redeployed Horror. And basically, what he's got to do if he wants to get away from these is he needs to go down the cliff and run away from them. Uh, down the cliff there, though, the, there's another creep right down there. Uh, I believe that's a Warg. No, no, that's a Defiler, actually. I heal your face. And he's uh, messing around with the Hobbits there. But if Zimbro shows up down there, uh, even if he turns on that Defiler, that means I'm going to just bubble the guy. But it means that suddenly it's going to be a 2 versus 1, which is just not going to be handy at all. And uh, here comes a Warg, so it already turned into a 2 versus 1. Now, with the Warg here, this basically means that Zimbros is outnumbered, outgunned, he's going to get it. Uh, his power levels are quite low, so he's going to have quite a bit of trouble. Now, even without the Warg here, I'm not so sure that it would have made too much of a difference. Yes, uh, my power, I'm towards the bottom of my pool, but I think we've seen before, I know how to manage my power pool when I get down towards the bottom. I'm okay with that, I don't panic. I, I know what to do, and I just do it. Here, I'm just trying to put more burst damage on because the problem with their new infamy system that they, they came out with is that you've got to keep putting damage on the guys otherwise you'll pass the uh, 20 second limit or so and you won't get any credit even though I've taken off thousands and thousands of points of morale uh, if I were to have stopped attacking him I would get nothing for all the effort I've already put in and uh, Grishon takes the killing blow and uh, that's another champion finished off now inside Horkala this is actually I forgot to hit the record button immediately, but uh, I managed to see this guy going by, and so I chased him into Hork Hollow, managed to, he tracked me, I tracked him, and uh, managed to get a, a jump on him. Uh, I did stun him there, but he's gotten me stunned as well. Uh, that was the new Hunter ability, which I, I can't remember, I think it's Cry of the Hunter, if uh, I remember the name of the skill right, but it did the, the stun and uh, gave him the morale bubble, which has already evaporated. Uh, I don't even have a command post down right now. Although I do have some extra infamy buffs, which uh, that's why I got 347 out of him. Now here's another one. Uh, for this one, I was actually attacking three hobbits at once, and now came up and he saw, and he waited until I got down to the last one, and then he jumped in. So that's why the recording starts a little late. But this is a, a bit of a rematch for him, and a, you know, a chance to, to see if he can drop me this time around. The big thing for this particular fight versus the last one is he's got two outpost buffs, and so do I. Uh, he also does not have the outnumbered buff, so that extra damage mitigation is not available to him. Uh, the outposts are a huge, huge, huge factor in the Ed Moors these days. The amount of damage that they provide that's uh, just bonus damage is tremendous. It's a little bit ridiculous in all honesty. Now, another thing that's a really big change is they did some incredible changes to the way induction skills work. That's why I'm in commander stance right now. Uh, it's because I was dealing with those extra hobbits, and, and so, so I feel like I need to be putting some extra healing on until I, I'm recovered and I feel like I'm confident with the situation. But basically the big change is that you only ever get knocked back twice on your induction bar. The first one is like 50% of how much it would do. The second is uh, all 25% I want to say. And then you don't get knocked back at all, no matter how many times they hit you. you the induction bar just keeps going. 
Now, uh, Zimbro, no, Assassination just showed up, so, and there's these other creeps here, so it's turned into the two champions trying to get some kills. And uh, right now I need to throw my bubble on that one Reaver to try to do something for him. And I try to hit it there, but he just, I lost sight of him. I'm trying to hit it here, it goes off, but he's already dead. So I, I messed that up and lost the opportunity there. So, so we go ahead and pursue them, because we can still get our infamy and everything from getting the kills off these guys. Uh, there I go ahead and use Shield Bash once again to stun him. Uh, Shield Bash is the brand new skill that War Leaders got with this expansion. All the classes got entirely new skills that we've never had before. Uh, Shield Bash is it for the War Leaders. It is a stun, it is a melee skill. Uh, it's got some fun mechanics that are linked up with it. Uh, there went an uh, Zimbro, no, Assassination is about to go down as well. I'm not going to get there in time. Uh, but the way Shield Bash works is that when it gets a critical, it automatically resets so you can use it again. And this can be paired with Call the Shadow so that you can guarantee a critical. Uh, you can get critical strings and it's actually going to hit very, very hard. Now, War Leader damage in general went up quite a bit uh, because we we got all of our ability skills, uh, our melee skill stuff, went from common damage to shadow damage. Now our auto attacks are still common, but the the damage boost from going to shadow on the abilities is uh, very large. Uh, this is Sovereign right here. He is, he's been kind of a nemesis of mine. Uh, he was the very first person I ever had a one versus one with, with this warlord back when I was rank four in Mines of Moria. And uh, he has been the, the guy I have never able to beat for a long, long time. Uh, I would be trying to sell an outpost and he would show up. I, I've gotten killed all kinds of places by Sovereign. Never managed to beat him in a 1 vs 1. Uh, and then I managed to beat him, I think, uh, uh, two weeks before the expansion went out. Unfortunately, I didn't record it. But this, uh, I run into him when I'm fighting some eagles near GB. And he wanted to have a fight. And so uh, we go at it. Uh, you notice that he does have quite a few buffs. Uh, I did hit two buff pots on my own just before we started. But uh, he is a little bit more buffed than I am, as far as just having extra buffs on him, but it really doesn't help. I, the big problem there was that he didn't get a very large gap to start between us, and that just got him killed. So uh, a bit of a <laughs> of trouble right there. Uh, anyway, the, as I was saying, the shield bash and the, the damage changes, uh, damage in general just went up on ward leaders. I, you can see incredibly effective, uh, having a stun for ward leaders now which previously they were the only guys without crowd control, then they got a semi-unreliable slow, now we've got a stun, is just massively improved. Uh, the power level from that stun is just amazing. War leaders have spent five years fighting without any CC, fighting while getting CC'd and still managing to put up a decent fight if you know what you're doing, which uh, I've shown plenty of times on, on this particular playlist with my videos and stuff. And uh, I've shown the people in game on numerous occasions. I mean, it, it could be done. Now we can fight with a stun, and wow, it is amazing how how much of a game changer it actually is. <clears throat> uh, some other cooldowns that got changed with Rohan were that uh, quarters never win got its cooldown cut to in half, uh, similar to how the banners got cut in half for their cooldowns as well. Uh, quarters is now a five minute cooldown, still has the same mechanic where heals and commander stance will lower the the active cooldown of quitters, so you can get it back off cooldown a whole lot faster than you used to be able to. Uh, really makes it a lot more usable, and it gives it more utility. And then of course there's also the, the change for the enhanced version of Quitters Never Win. It doesn't give as much of a uh, boost to the cooldown reduction as it used to, so it only takes I think two minutes off the cooldown, whereas it used to take half the cooldown away. But it has gained an even bigger boost to the uh, heal amount that it gives, uh, whereas that had been cut down a little bit. It got a tiny boost just to compensate for the fact that it doesn't take away as much of the cooldown anymore. Uh, it's, uh, if you trait snap out of it, you now have a heal over time, which uh, if you, you noticed in my traits earlier, that's not something that I build for. Uh, just learning to use snap out of it now that it's always available is going to be challenging enough for me, having gone for as long as I have without ever using that skill. So I'm going to have to work on that before I even think about taking something out of my current trait setup. Uh, another big thing is that Shield Mastery, which is the block defense trait, uh, it now boosts the damage on Shield Blow, or, or Bash rather, by uh, 25%. It's a very hefty boost. And uh, Empowering, which is the power regeneration trait for War Leaders, now adds 
tactical mastery grading, which increases the damage of your shouts. So if you have the shield mastery trait slotted in, which I do without empowering, something very interesting happens based on output stuff. If you've got no outpost buffs or you've only got up to, I think, two, shield bash is going to be your hardest hitting skill. If you were to have empower and slot it, I'm not sure how it would fall. I, I think black speech would be creep closer, but I don't know if it would actually pass it. But as you get more outposts, because shield bash is already benefiting from a big percentage boost, and so the the gains it gets on the outpost buffs, which the outposts increase mastery rating, which increases your damage based by percentage. Uh, it doesn't get as much from that percentage boost as the other damage skills do. So once you get to three or more outposts, uh, black speech overtakes the shield bash in my case and becomes the hardest hitting damage skill and uh, it, hit, it would hit even harder if I were to have empowering traded which is something I slot in empowering if I really really want to be mean to people in 1v1 then uh, my, my alternate build my one and only alternate build on my war leader is I take away improved on your feet and improved field promotion I put in empowering and I put in offensive something rather the offensive boost i can't remember the name of the trait right now it's like three percent to all your damage boost stuff uh, i'd put those two traits in and that is how i become a nasty soloing war leader when I, even more so than normal uh, is i put those two traits in and then power really doesn't become much of an issue at all because of the power boost uh, then i i'm now all these days i'd get a damage boost on top of that from the empowering trait and then I'd have the even greater boost from the extra percent from my damage boost. So just something to keep in mind if you want to seriously go for soloing, as uh, you can drop a couple more traits and get even more benefit out of that. Another couple big things, uh, the field promotion bubble is now an instant skill, which means that it fires off and will cut through animations, which means that you can use that bubble if you want to be crafty to cut through the long animation of something like Call the Shadow, which has a long animation for no particular reason, or cut off the, uh, the animation of one of your shouts or something like that, and uh, bubble somebody at the same time if you're using, say, target forwarding. Uh, the other skill that had that change given to it was Fracture, which, is, which has been our interrupt ever since Isengard, but now it's also an immediate skill. Uh, the other thing is that Fracture used to hit just as hard as uh, Intimidating Shout did, except that it did common damage, but they had the exact same numbers, and so it, on targets that had the same mitigation for common and shadow, or which uh, Hor Hollow Hobbits have always had that, uh, you could see that they really did hit exactly equally as, in terms of damage. But uh, now that they've gone to shadow damage, in addition to getting the, the boost just from turning to shadow, uh, Fracture also got a big boost to its general damage output. So uh, the hierarchy of damage has basically gone to cleave and then intimidating shout and menacing roar are the same amount of damage but menacing roar is a bit heavy on the power and it does hit four targets instead of just one then you've got fracture and then you've got uh your well depending on on your buffs shield bash and uh, black speech kind of roll in there switching between best and second best uh, just based on how many buffs you have and what your traits exactly are. If you don't have Shield Mastery, Black Speech is going to be on top pretty much all the time. Uh, if you do have Shield Mastery but you don't have Empowering, sometimes shield mas the Shield Batch is going to be higher, sometimes not. And uh, that, that's the really big stuff. Uh, also, Mobilize and March, you can use those while running once again. And uh, I think that covers most of the major stuff. I mean, you've gotten to see just what it looks like. But uh, here's something that's just for fun. Uh, this is one of the last clips that I have from Rise of Isengard, and this is some raiding stuff, so we're just going to go ahead and take a little look at this, and uh, this, is, this is just going to be a, a chance for me to talk about some basics and uh, some general advice. So uh, here we come, we are outflanking the opposing raid right here, and uh, managed to get right in back into the hunters and stuff. Uh, Gildan here right there, the runekeeper, he's a healing runekeeper, he's also leading the Freak raid, and uh, he's going to be a pretty high priority target if we can actually get him. But it looks like the Freeps are trying to run, so we're just going to cut down all the ones that we can right now. As you notice, the Freeps do have the outnumbered buff in this particular video. And uh, really, they're just getting hammered. Uh, poor little Butterfinger <laughs> managed to catch him. Now we're going to try to get that burglar before he gets away, and yeah, he goes down. Uh, pretty much everyone's dead here. I finally catch sight of Calame, who is one of the, the premier healing minstrels. Uh, 
she's enough of a well-known mistral that I pretty much always give her the sun, and that's... You know you're a well-known mistral when I have a, a symbol that I think of as being yours in particular. Uh, Dagger gets the moon, which I sometimes use as the symbol for myself. Uh, Calame gets the, the sun. Some people get the leaf. Uh, occasionally they get swapped out for the sun. Some people get stars and things like that. Uh, so that's just how it goes. Now, there is Gotku right there. He is using his warg sprint, but notice he fails to hit her with crippling bite. And this is something that reavers and wargs need to need to need to need to be aware of. Slow your targets and keep on applying that again and again. I mean, I managed to get the slow just there, but she should have been slowed earlier, and we should have caught her sooner. Uh, now, there's only the three of us right here. There's Dreamweber and myself, and we've come all the way back to GB. This is a classic example of overextending, and uh, <laughs> realizing that Calamay's already gotten it away because of failure to actually slow her down. Uh, I've gone ahead and switched to Shrada and Webenstein, not Dreamweber, it's Webenstein. Uh, it's gone ahead and switched targets. We're tr gonna try to get Shrada right here, but more Freeps are coming out of the the steps of GB, and Calame comes back, she's gonna go ahead and pop a heal here, and there Shrada's right back up to, to full, and uh, so we've really gotten ourselves in trouble here. Uh, I take a blast from the one shot right there, which uh, just stepped in the wrong spot, and it just kind of got it messed up. Uh, but nice. but as you can see, the, the, the big things there are just remember to actually use your slow skills, especially the guys that scramble ones. Hit those off all the time that you can, because th that is just part of what you need to do. You need to slow down your targets so that everybody else can catch up and you can get the kill. Uh, if Gotku had hit Crippling Bite right off the top as his first skill on Kalame and applied it every time it came back up, Webenstein and I would have caught right up, gotten our melee damage on to Kalame as well, gotten our whatever debuffs and stuff. We would have slaughtered her before she got away, most likely, or she would have been forced to pop more cooldowns, something like that. He didn't, got away, we all got killed. That's just how it goes. Anyway, uh, Rohan is looking really good. Uh, another thing I do want to mention is that they did make a big graphical upgrade to the entire game engine, and uh, it shows. The game does... I mean, it looks like the same Lotro, but at the same time, it does look a little bit nicer. You realize that there's a definite level of improvement. I mean, yeah, the, the stuff being rendered is the same stuff that's being rendered, but the way it's being rendered has definitely improved, and it, it shows. It, it just feels a bit more polished and a bit nicer, and uh, so far I think that the expansion's off to a good start. Anyway, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.